Hello and welcome. No, this is not a yet another episode on floral jackets. I just had them out. Today's ep- exciting episode is me making a tweed jacket. It's perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Perfect jacket. But before we get to the very exciting tweed jacket, I just so last episode was me turning this base jacket with the scoop neck into a floral jacket and all the flowers and leaves are in that bag there. I also added some big beads and here they are. They're absolutely gorgeous. So first I added the fl- uh, the leaves, all different colored leaves and pinned them on, then stitched them on. And then once that was done, I added all the flowers. It's not finished yet, but, um, and some really l- uh, all different kinds of beads as well, you know, you know, in some colors. But after I did that, I filmed it and then I edited it. And then as soon as I like uploaded the video, I was like, why didn't I get all three jackets out? Because I've made three now. Well, I haven't finished the third one. It's like, why didn't I get them all out and put them next to each other? And oh my goodness, it kind of looks like um, sunshine, sort of autumn harvest and a sort of winter berry one, don't they? So what do I need to do next? Maybe a spring looking one. I do have some white flowers like so green and white that would be pretty and I love snowdrops the flowers that come right at the end of Scottish winter just before spring so maybe I'll do that and they're white and green anyway now it is time to make a tweed jacket and I've got this gorgeous tweed it's sort of it's all different things in there but I bought it because it's of the tulle I just think it's really beautiful it's difficult to work with because it's much lighter than a standard wool based tweed but yeah I like a challenge so let's get to it first I cut out all the pieces in um, net or netting for the structural layer because tweed is gorgeous but it's really quite floppy and it doesn't age well so if you put it mount it on a backing fabric then it just holds itself up and it always looks really beautiful so yeah we've got the netting is our structural layer and so I cut out all the pieces and then I'm just going to machine sew the back three pieces into one shell and the two left pieces of the left front and two pieces of the right front together so we have from the left here we've got left front right front and um, the back so we've got well I don't know my left from my right but you know what I mean the two bits from the front and the bit from the back and then I got out the tweed and I laid it flat on the bench and I pinned the back first because that's the biggest bit and then the left front and right front and once I'd cut out each of those then I used the remaining fabric to do the sleeves and the inside front piece of the um so it's going to be the front lining but it's cut out of tweed then you hand stitch the tweed to the backing fabric and once that's done the next step is to sew the front center lining pieces to the um, two fronts and then once that's done you pin the back to the front at the top to form the shoulders and then you pin them at the side and machine sew at the side as well so the whole of the torso is one piece and you also sew the sleeves together oh the pattern i'm using is mccall's 6041 i don't recommend it i'm just using it because when you do beading um so this has a uh, more ease in the sleeve so a baggier sleeve which means when I'm beading I can there's more room for movement I would recommend the Vogue 7975 I've got like literally a hundred jackets that I've made from this pattern and it's a gorgeous pattern so that's one I would recommend personally so this McCall's 6041 and the Vogue 7975 both have a two-part sleeve pattern so you have to pin them together it just allows for more movement because there's a little bit of a bend in the sleeve in at the elbow so anyway um machine sew the two pieces of the sleeve together and then you splay open the seams at the shoulder the side 
and where you joined the center front as well as the sleeves and yeah splay them open pin the seams back and then hand stitch them down you have to hand stitch your seam, uh, seam allowance down because it's tweed it would fray if you didn't it also helps the jacket to sit well and gives more stabilization to the whole piece so once you've stitched everything down as you can see they're all done beautifully so we have the neckline that needs to be done we also have the cuffs and and the hem of the torso of the jacket to do and personally I find it easier to do them first before you set the sleeves because then you've got the arms sort of in your way every time you try and do everything anything so now that we've done the seams properly um, hand stitch them back then you care very carefully pull through the sleeves so that they are the correct way and then you just put go around and measure where the seam allowance uh, the hem and the cuffs need to be turned up. You pin them into place and then you hand stitch them down. And there we go. It's so beautiful. This is a lovely tweed. I can't wait to bead this. Anyway, so I also did the cuffs and they are ready to go. So the next thing is the um, neckline. So it's a collarless jacket. So you just, um, I've measured around where the pins are and then you clip the curve so just uh, cut into it and then pin back the um the edge to the neckline so that all the bits are back and everything is where it needs to be um so then um so here we go and it is <laughs> it's really difficult trying to hand sew around this many pins but in my experience I've done dozens of jackets this way this is the easiest way even though it gets in the way of your th needle and thread um, yeah and then I just go around it twice hand stitching um, everything into place so there we go the neckline is done and the last part is setting the sleeves so um, the back of each sleeve has a double notch so that's how you can tell which one's the left one and which one's the right one and then you just plus if it's a good sleeve then you can just tell by looking at it you can tell the the back is steeper and the front is sort of a more smooth rise and yeah so then you pin it into place I pin the top center bottom center bottom two thirds and then I ease in the top third and once that's done it is time to very very carefully very slowly machine sew this once you've machine sewn it once just turn out the sleeves check that they're fine then machine sew it twice to reinforce it then you clip the curves like cut um like the bottom third where your underarm will be you just cut notches in there and then you hand stitch the seam allowance back into the sleeve this is obviously a different jacket this is actually the base jacket that became the yellow floral jacket that you saw at the start anyway um yeah so as i said you push the seam allowance back up into the sleeve and it just helps round out the shoulder beautifully and then i hand stitch the seam allowance down first from the outside and then I turn the jacket back in and I stitch it again from the inside. And that way it's really secure. Um, a lot of people complain that their sleeves fall off or get holes in them or something. I don't know what they're doing, but I don't, I think it, as long as you hand stitch your seam allowance back securely, it just gives you extra strength to your sleeves. And I've been making my own jackets for 15 years and I have never had a problem with them. So I, I, I know once you've almost finished, then it's, you sort of like to skip a few steps or very tempted to skip a few steps at the end, but I wouldn't skip this one. It's really important to just, it reinforces the seams. So that was it from the front. Here it is from the side. And yeah, um, it sort of sits out a little bit because I added two layers of netting because I know I want to do a lot of heavy beading on it. So it's going to look a little bit more relaxed and more cardigan and like more like a vintage Chanel style jacket once it's done. See, particularly in the shoulders here, I feel like you can see that there's a structural layer, but you won't really be able to see that once the weight of the beads is on there. 
It is such a cute tweed. In person, you can really see the flecks of coral and white and aqua and blue and teal. Whereas from far away, I feel like it sort of looks like a, a whitish, bluish teal. And it's, it's got a lot more colour and it's a lot more alive in person. I guess you could say the same thing about every tweed. That's why I love them. Like from far away, they just look like one colour. But up close, you just see all these different specks and ugh, so beautiful. So here it is again. It's just so alive with all these different colours and different types, textures and different yarns and tulle in there. So I'm not sure what I got out a bunch of different types of beads. I do like the periwinkle blue on there, but I don't know. It's sort of, I don't know, not quite. I think I've got more blue sort of tweeds that would look good with that. I do really like the orange and pink transparent plastic beads I think they would look absolutely adorable on this and so they're definitely a contender uh, then we've got bows these are um, a bigger heavier bow than I used recently on the string theory jacket these are a completely different type you'll see in a minute that I've also got out some of the smaller be um, bow shaped beads I've got the pink flowers and I really do like these. I think the pink look definitely look better than the blue ones. I um but I'm not sure. Um I I like them, but I'm wondering if it's too pretty. I don't tend to wear the pretty, you know, quote unquote pretty jackets as much as I wear the other ones, so I'm not sure. So here are the bows. They're the same size as the ones on the string theory jacket. And um, yeah, I've got some blue. These are just um, this those squarish beads, and yeah, again, I don't think the blue goes particularly well with the teal with this te um, teal aqua blue coral and white tweed. These, I think this looks awesome. Actually, I'm looking at the footage now, and it looks better in person. They. They really pick up on the coral flecks and the pink flecks in the tweed. So I think the bright pink and the... Maybe I'll mix a few lighter pink beads in there as well. Oh, I also have these um, pineapples. I was just trying to find all the beads that I've just shown you and I came across the pineapple sequence. I was like, oh, I still have these. I don't think they're particularly relevant to this tweed, but I just got them out anyway because I think they're cute. I love this one, the orange and the pink, but I've got this, maybe maybe if I added flowers, maybe, but I've got a couple of tweeds that are actually pink and orange, and I think I'll save them for that because they would just look divine on that. Whereas this mix of corals and different pale and sort of candy pinks, I think if I put a few more pale pinks in there, maybe. Yeah, I definitely like them. Uh, oh, I just got out the pineapple ones to show you. I don't think they match this one. These are a couple of the other fabrics that I got out for. So I, I think that look definitely look interesting on the yellow lace. Definitely the yellow floral lace. And they'd look hilarious on this synthetic fabric. But actually, I like the pink and orange on that one. Yeah, but I got it out to show you the... No, I don't think the... No. I've got this pink and yellow tweed and it's absolutely gorgeous. So maybe I'll put the pineapples on that as well as some yellow beads and pink beads. Maybe I'll do that. See, this is a problem. I get the beads out and I just end up getting so much else out. And now I have to go and clean up. Okay, they look really good. So now I have to go and clean all this up. Anyway, that was me making this jacket. I'm not really sure how I'm going to beat it. Well, I currently like those pink and coral beads. But in December, I remember I had a jar of sort of apricot -y, coral ones 
that I was going to use and before that I had some teal coloured bits of shell that I was going to use. So who knows? Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and oh my gosh, look at all those floral jackets. Oh, so gorgeous. And a tweed jacket. Oh, spoiled for choice. Anyway, thanks again for watching and happy sewing.